Carlos Ramirez, owner of NVS Audio in Roselle, New Jersey. We have this new 19 Road Glide. Came in for a wiring rescue. This one's pretty, pretty damn bad. I talked about this one a little bit yesterday, but um, I was more talking about proper fusing connections. We're going to dive into this and show you all the mistakes. This is, this is really not right. I can't believe they did this to the client. This is really not fair, but we're going to make it right. Okay, so we have some craziness going on here. So we have an 8 gauge wire that shaved down to 12 gauge. Then they put quick disconnects under the seat so the client has to remove the seat to disconnect the bags. And this is not the first time I've seen this. They actually notch out the top of the bag to run the harness across and then notch out the top of the bag here. The wires, a damn spaghetti mess. Amplifiers not mounted down. Why the DSPs in the saddle bag instead of the fairing? I have no idea. They use a trailer connector for the speaker wires going to the front. We have a glass fuse holder, and you know how I feel about these. These are the absolute worst fuse holders you can use on a motorcycle because they're held in with friction and pressure. So that has to be removed. Plus it's an eight gauge amplifier. So you ran an eight gauge ground, but a 12 gauge power. That does make sense. Plus, why would you do that when Stinger makes a mini a &L fuse holder that you put right here instead of putting these two here? So they use the wrong fuse holder there. And then on the other side, they use a the correct fuse holder. This is a mini a &L. The fuse is held down by mechanical fasteners. So you have no vibration issues. The six von nines are screwed directly into the side of the bag with no spacers. So I'm sure that the six mine is hitting the bag and causing rattles. And then they drilled a whole bunch of small, tiny holes instead of routing out a six mine opening and covering it with grill or some protective material. This is a complete disaster. We're gonna have to rip it all out. And the sad part, it's all really good equipment. Diamond audio, diamond audio, diamond audio, diamond audio. Uh, diamond audio, diamond audio horns. And then small things. These screws, you can go to Home Depot and pick up stainless steel screws. This looks terrible. This bike is brand new. Screws are already rusted. That's a horrible look. And then something that screams out to me, this shop must not like this customer. You use these three screws on this side. Where's the fourth? And those are not the right size screws to hold in these grills. So now the grill is damaged. And then on the other side, use three completely different screws and then over tighten it and split the damn grill. So now these grills are garbage and have to be replaced. Go to Home Depot and pick up a bag of stainless steel screws that fit in there. Take the damn grill with you. The screws are five, six dollars. Do better, please. I can only imagine what kind of mess is in the fairing. Okay, so when I pulled off the fairing, it's exactly what I was afraid of. I'm sorry, but whoever installed this does not know what they're doing, and here's the proof. We have a Biketronics line leveler, which is fine. And they used it because of T-harnesses into the factory radio. But we're playing pink noise to the radio. We have nothing below 125 hertz. So we have no bass at all. We have no base because from the line leveler, we have nothing below 125. So fine, they use the line leveler. Then you go into the bag and there's a DSR-1 DSP. So instead of using speaker level and removing the line leveler and going speaker level to the DSP so you get full range, they went through the auxiliary with signal it's already chopped up by the line leveler. So the line leveler is blocking the low base then you feed the DSP, which could take full range, 20 hertz to 20,000 hertz, and then feed it out to the speakers. So if you have this, you don't need that. And in case you think I'm wrong, take a look at that signal. Now we're gonna move the jumper to the output harness here and see if we have full range signal. Okay, now watch, I'm gonna do it in real time. So we have nothing below here. Now I'm gonna tell you what's gonna happen before I actually do it. 
I'm gonna move the alligator clips from the output of the line leveler and I'm gonna move it to here, to the input, which is coming directly off the factory radio. And I guarantee you that line fills up all the way down. Hey, look at that. We have signal all the way down. It's amazing. So now we have 31 hertz, 40 hertz, 50 hertz, all the way up to 20,000 hertz. So I'll take that signal over the output of that signal. So now we're gonna move the DSR1 DSP to the front. We're gonna feed it that signal and the customer is gonna get bass. It's not hard people. This is not the right tool for this application, especially considering that you have this. Okay, there is no excuse for doing this wrong and I'm gonna show you why. So this is the Biketronics line leveler, which comes with the plug and play adapters that go into the factory Harley speaker plugs. So now you purchase a DSR1 DSP. This is how I know that the shop that did this doesn't know what they're doing. Because you see the colors on those wires going into the line leveler? Guess what the colors are on the Rockford DSR-1. So if you connect that to that and that to that and match up the colors, you now fed input from the factory plug and play harness into the DSR-1 DSP. So you could have literally removed the line leveler, matched up the wire colors to the DSR-1, and now made a T-harness for your DSR-1 without making any mistakes because it's color-coded from the factory. Rockford DSR-1 is gray, gray, black, white, white, black. Line leveler is white, white, black, gray, gray, black. So we're gonna cut it here and solder those wires into these wires and have a plug and play harness for the DSP and take out the line leveler. And then we're gonna have 20 Hertz to 20,000 Hertz full range for the customer's amplifiers. So the six mines in the bags will actually make bass. It's people make it harder than it has to be. It's literally easier to do it the right way. So it took 10 minutes, Ricky soldered up the harnesses so these are the plug and play that came with the line leveler they're now soldered onto the input harness and now it plugs right into the factory see easy 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 plug and play into the dsr1 it's that easy to upgrade from a line leveler to a dsr1 see this is the bullshit i'm talking about this amplifier takes eight gauge wire in and look at this crap This is ridiculous. Okay, so we figured out why the tweeter wasn't playing on the left side. So if you follow the connection, they got the plugs confused. So this plug normally gets plugged into there. So if you trace this down, ta-da! So that explains why the cigarette lighter wasn't working because it was plugged into the tweeter crossover. And then the tweeter itself was plugged into the cigarette lighter harness. So that tweeter's no good. And we're gonna plug this back and have his cigarette lighter start working again. Wow, 